Well, good evening to everyone, and I would like to welcome uh, all members of Council to our meeting this evening, all of our staff uh, that are in attendance. Selena, welcome, uh, Selena. Thanks for uh, being here, uh, members of the public, and any media that may be in attendance uh, virtually. I would like to indicate that this meeting has been called to hear an application under the Planning Act that require a public meeting and for Council or the Committee of Adjustment to consider any decisions related to those relevant applications. Meetings of Council are live streamed on the Township's official website in accordance with the live streaming and virtual participation of meetings policy. By attending this meeting, attendees and participants are consenting to their image, voice and comments being recorded and available for public viewing on the township's website does anyone have a pecuniary interest or general nature thereof to indicate at this time of any agenda item this evening okay i thank you for that uh, the purpose of the meeting is a public meeting uh, for the committee of adjustment and i would entertain a mover and a seconder to adjourn a regular council meeting and that would be moved by councillor miltonberg seconded by council snowblin that Ashfield Colburn Wawanosh Council hereby adjourns a regular council meeting and opens the public meeting. The Committee of Adjustment to review minor variance applications MV09 23 Aldrich and MV10 23 McDonald. All in favor of this motion. And that is carried. Thank you. I would like to call the Committee of Adjustment meeting to order and indicate that meetings of council are live streamed on the township's official website in accordance with the live streaming and virtual participation of meetings policy. By attending this meeting, attendees and participants are consenting to their image, voice and comments being recorded and available for public viewing on the township's website. And welcome to all. Does anyone have a pecuniary interest or general nature thereof to indicate of any agenda item that we have this evening? Thank you. Yeah, we will uh, review minor variance application file MV09-23 Aldrich. Selena, please uh, proceed with your presentation. Too. Great. Thank you, Mayor McNeil, and thanks, Council. Um, so as mentioned, this is application MV09-2023. Uh, this property is located at 33807 South Street in Port Albert, um, and the owners and applicants are Tim and Tracy Aldrich. So these, uh, this is just a 2020 aerial photo of the subject property. It's outlined in orange here. These applicants are looking for relief from section 3.4.4 of the ACW zoning bylaw, which stipulates lot coverage of accessory buildings. And this is in order to construct a detached garage. Um, 3.4.4 requires that the total lot coverage of accessory structures um, shall not exceed the lesser of 6% of the coverage of the total lot or the coverage of the main residence. Um, currently, there is an existing shed on the property. It's not visible in this photo because it was constructed after this photo was taken, but that shed does currently exceed the lot coverage of the residents. Um, so the applicants are basically seeking to further exceed the lot coverage of the main residence from what's exceeded today in order to allow for that detached garage. So this is just a site plan submitted by the applicants where it says part four, there's a rectangular um, box that represents the location of the existing shed. And then the detached garage that's proposed, it's kind of hard to see my mouse circling here, but it's just immediately west of the existing uh, residence. So as mentioned, this property is south of Port Albert. Um, it's designated Lakeshore Residential and it is zoned LR2, which is our Lakeshore Residential Seasonal Zone. Um, the applicants did previously obtain relief from this same provision back in 2021 in order to construct um, this shed, as well as to exceed the maximum building height uh, allowed for that shed. Um, and it's noted that they're once again looking for relief from that same provision. Um, however, I'll just flip over to the slide that shows the elevations here. The context is relevant in this situation. Um, this detached garage, for all intents and purposes, visually looks to be attached. It actually shares the same roof line, but it doesn't technically meet the definition of attached because the walls are not fully enclosed. Um, the applicants were made aware that by enclosing the walls, they could essentially avoid the variance, but this is the um, design that they're looking to proceed with. And so that is why they have uh, sought relief here. 
So in terms of the tests of a four minor variance in this case, um, this variance can be considered minor while the lot coverage of accessory structures on the property will be more than double that of the residents if this application is approved. The actual increase in lot coverage for accessory structures sought through this application is quite minor. Um, Further, the size, scale, and design of the proposed garage, again, it suggests that it will be used primarily as part of the main residence from a practical perspective. Um, and it does have, the detached garage itself does have a lesser lot coverage of that of the house. It's just, again, that shed that pushes it over the 3.4.4 provision. Um, the variance can be considered appropriate planning. This property is quite large, meaning that while there's an increased lot coverage being sought here, it doesn't impact the property's ability to be serviced by well and septic, um, and nor does it exceed that 6% lot coverage that's mentioned in the bylaw. Um, this development does conform with the official plan and zoning bylaw. The property is going to continue to be used for residential purposes, which is what is permitted here, and all other, the pr other provisions of the bylaw have been met. Uh, no comments were received from neighbors on this file and ACW staff did not have any concerns. So it is recommended that MV09-2023 be approved, uh, subject to those two standard conditions being that the uh, structure is constructed to the drawing shown in this photo and that it be built within 18 months of the date of decision. So happy to answer any questions of council. Thank you very much for that, Selena. As indicated, this is a public meeting and now is an opportunity for any members of the public to make any comments that they would like to, and I'll first invite anyone that would like to speak opposed to this application. Nothing online, Caitlin? Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor of this application? <clears throat> would the applicant like care to make any comments? Seeing none, council, questions, comments? Okay, pretty simple. So I would entertain a mover and a seconder that this be approved with the conditions as noted in the planner's report. Councillor Blake moves, Deputy Mayor Van Stone seconds. All in favor of the motion. That is carried. Uh, Selena, what would you recommend to us for the effect of public and agency comments in this decision, please? Uh, I'd recommend 2A, uh, no comments received from the public, so no influence on the decision, and 3B, uh, supportive comments received from staff, the effect of which uh, influenced the decision of council to approve. Okay, so it has been suggested 2A and 3B be the effect of public and agency comments in the decision, and I will entertain a show of hands if council is in support of this. And that is supported by council. Thank you very much. Uh, Selena, would you care to address us, please, on um, application uh, MV10-23, McDonald, please. Yes, thank you. Um, so this is MV10. This property is 85664 Henry Street in St. Helens. And the owners and applicants are Elliot and Michelle McDonald. Um, these applicants have submitted a application under Section 45 uh, 2A2 Act to permit a barn for livestock and storage uses under the legal non-conforming policies of the ACW zoning bylaw. So this is a bit different of an application, not one that we see very often, but essentially Section 45 of the Planning Act. Council. One of those powers is the standard minor variance that we just referred to. The other one allows for um, when there is a legal non-conforming use on a property, that section 45.2A2 allows um, council to permit the use of land, a building or structure for a new use, which is similar to that of the legal non-conforming use or is more compatible with the uses permitted in the zoning bylaw. So legal non-conforming is typically a term which would refer to a use and or a structure um, which was legally established at one point in time, but which no longer conforms with the applicable zoning bylaw. So in this case, um, there is a legal non-conforming livestock use, as well as formerly two legal non-conforming livestock barns. And those are legal non-conforming because the property is located within St. Helens and it is zoned uh, Village Hamlet Residential, which does not permit livestock uses and barns as structure structures. Um, the legal non-conforming livestock use is essentially comprised of about 100 chickens, two horses, and one pony. The, this is in general conformity with the livestock use on record for the property throughout history in terms of size and scale. So that's all in conformity presently. Um, one of the legal non-conforming barns of the two barns on this property, which you can just see in the aerial photo here, the one that's more west kind of shown underneath the orange line, um, this barn burned down uh, earlier this year. 
Um, the ACW zoning bylaw permits that in a case where there's a legal non-conforming barn or structure such as this, it can be reconstructed within two years if it were destroyed by a disaster such as a fire um, up to the same size and scale. The challenge in this case is that this barn was partially located on the ACW Township Road allowance, so it wasn't possible for it to be reconstructed in the same location. So alternatively, the applicants are proposing that rather than reconstructing this barn, they're proposing to tear down the remaining barn and build one new barn that would have the same square footage of the two former barns, as well as be two stories in height, which was what the two former barns were as well. Um, and this barn is again proposed to be used for livestock and storage. So the tests for a proposal under section 452A2 are pretty simple. It's just, is the proposal similar to what previously existed? And uh, is it arguably more compatible? So in this case, it's noted that again, the square footage of the barn that's proposed is the same as that which existed. Um, and locating the barn off the township road allowances for obvious reasons, a better compatibility use with the former barn. So in terms of circulation, this gets circulated the same way as a minor variance does. Um, there were no comments received from neighbors as a result of the application. Uh, ACW staff have reviewed the proposal. We have also chatted with OMAFRA um, and OMAFRA did confirm that MDS does not apply to this because it's located within a settlement area um, and the nutrient units on property do not trigger anything in terms of nutrient management. The uh, building department notes that any complaints about the use or handling of manure would be addressed by the township's bylaw enforcement officer if those came forward in the future. So ACW staff have no concerns. Um, it is noted that presently manure from the existing livestock is stored openly on site. Um, so as a condition of this approval, planning and building staff are recommending that just in order to increase compatibility with the surrounding neighborhood, that just a manure storage facility be installed on site as a condition of approval. So it is staff's opinion that the proposed barn is similar to the two former legal non-conforming barns. Um, and is arguably more compatible with the surrounding uses. So it's recommended that this application be approved, uh, just subject to conditions that it be constructed consistently with the elevation drawings, which I'll flip to here in a moment. This is just the site plan for reference here as well, and that that manure storage be installed uh, to the satisfaction of the CBO. So I'll flip through here. This is just the location of the new proposed barn, roughly where the folks are standing there. And then this is the elevation drawings um, submitted for the barn as well. So a bit of a different application, but happy to answer any questions of council in terms of process or logistics here. Well, thank you very much. I think you outlined it well, Selena, and thank you very much for that. And again, this is a public meeting. So I will ask if there's any mem members of the public that would like to speak opposed to this application. Aware of any? Is there any members of the public that would like to speak in favor of this application? Uh, if if there is, please go to the uh, the podium and indicate your name, and then make your comments, please. Good evening, Council. Uh, it's Cole McDonald. Uh, we live around the corner from uh, the subject property, and we are in favor of this uh, barn being constructed. Thank, Thank you. you very much for that, uh, Cole. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this application? And please uh, state your name and your comments, please. Uh, Lewis Shatler. Uh, I was wondering about this talk about the manure uh, for a separate building or whatever. Could it be inside the new building in a corner, like specifically marked out for the manure storage? Okay, I understand your question, Selena. Maybe that didn't go with what I was supposed to ask or whatever. You always follow uh, well, instructions pretty good, do you? I was just trying to... I know, I understand. Two buildings. Yes. I have one building with a corner in the new barns. Barns? Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Please continue. Kind of in the, in the new barn as a manure storage, you know. Inside, you're yeah, asking. Inside, like take a box stall, sure. however wide, and make it for the manure storage so it wouldn't be outside okay I'll... rather than uh, another building or a cement yard but okay so i'll defer to our staff selena yep. please yeah through the mayor um the wording on that condition was sort of left open to uh, do whatever suits kind of the applicants and the cbo best i think that would be suitable brett's idea was maybe even just like a, a storage bin outside so i think indoor storage would be perfectly sufficient if that's what the applicants would be seeking in this case 
Does that answer your question, Lewis? Did you catch that? To use the bin? Oh, oh, yeah. Just repeat that again, if you would, please, Selena. Yeah, it would just be a bin outside or inside would probably work fine for Brett. Um, it'll just be his condition to clear at the time of permit. So definitely open to whatever works best for you folks. And okay. yeah. That's fair. Okay, thank you for that. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this application? Okay. Do you have any comments you'd like to make? Thank you. It, would the applicant care to make any comments on this application at this time? Yeah. Please, and, and state your name and your comments, please. Uh, Michelle McDonald. I just have a question or concern that if with the manure bin, is that going to set up a precedence for my other neighbors that are uh, similarly that have barns and animals that are outside, um, I can think of at least three or four. Is this going to set up a precedence for them in the in bylaws for their manure management? Okay, thank you for the question. Selena, please. So I would suggest no, really, in most cases, nutrient management is regulated through OMAFRA. In this case, we're just talking about a scale that goes beneath what OMAFRA would regulate. Um, I would say if, if someone who didn't have an application and who had open storage had a complaint about manure, um, as kind of noted in the report, that would be something that Bruce would investigate and it may be appropriate at that time to deal with that through manure storage. Um, in the case of this application, it was just felt that in order to increase that compatibility, that that would be maybe an appropriate, easy measure. But um, I don't think we'll be creating precedents to higher the standards of what exists today by any means. Yes, thank you very much for that. Is that OK? That answers your question. Yep, perfect. Uh, Okay, I will now open it up to members of council if you have any questions or comments on this application. Uh, Councilor Miltenberg, please. Uh, yeah, the um, proposed building is the same square footage and same height, but clearly it's going to be bigger, but it's still consistent. So are you saying that there are some that are equivalent size? Because most are smaller in the hamlet are they not is this going to be the biggest one or are there others that size i don't really have a clear picture of square footage yeah so i guess for clarity and i'll maybe go back to the site plan here this this barn is going to be larger than the barn that burned down but that's because the applicants are taking down the other existing barn so it's sort of two barns put into one in this case in driving around st helens the barn sizes really vary um i think this one will possibly be the biggest but it's also very common to see on other properties multiple small storage buildings that contribute to a livestock use um so if i was if we were going toe for toe i think it's going to be pretty comparable to what exists today um just in reviewing because that was another question we had when this application came forward but um i think it'll be fairly consistent is my impression okay so this one barn will basically be the same size as the existing barn that will be taken down and the one that burned correct yep <gasps> councillor miltenberg please yeah i understood that i just wanted to know if there was going to be a mcmansion in the middle of St. Helens, really. Yeah. But you're saying it's consistent with, with others. I think so. Yeah. I mean, in terms of age, the other existing barns are quite old. Some of them exceed over 100 years. So it'll certainly be a newer one and maybe visually look, you know, a bit different because of that. But I think it'll remain consistent with just the existing character of the area. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? If you could just take the screen down, uh, yes, if you could, please, you. Uh, Selena, just so that I could see uh, Councillor Forrester. You're good, uh, Councillor Forrester. Okay, I would entertain a mover and a seconder uh, to approve this application with the conditions as noted in the planner's report. Councillor Miltenberg and Councillor Hickey seconds. All in favor of the motion. And that is carried. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Selena, what would you suggest to us as the effect of public and agency comments on this decision, please? Yeah, I would suggest 3A, supportive comments were received from the public, which influenced Council's decision to approve. And then 3B, similarly, that supportive comments were received from agencies. Thank you very much for that. So the effect of public and agency comments on this decision would be 3A and 3B. And I'll ask for a show of hands from Council if we are in support of this. And that is supported by council. Thank you very much uh, for this, Selena. And I will now entertain a mover and a seconder to close the public meeting, the Committee of Adjustment. Moved by Deputy Mayor Vanstone, seconded by Councillor Forrester. All in favor of the motion. And that is carried. Thank you very much.
And I would entertain a mover and a seconder to reconvene our regular council or council meeting. Councilor Hickey moves. Councilor Blake seconds. All in favor of the motion. And that is carried. Thank you. Selena, would you like to address us on consent file C56-23, Taylor and Shepard, please? Yes, uh, thank you. So this is C5623. Um, this property is 26 Russell Street in Port Albert. The owners are Paul Taylor and Peggy Shepard and Doug Cal uh, Colbert has applied on their behalf. Um, so the owners and applicant here are seeking a lot boundary adjustment in order to merge the proposed severed parcel with the lands to the south, which are owned by the same property owners. Um, this is for the purpose of servicing those lands to the south for future development as required in preliminary engineering drawings. This property is outlined in orange here. It's just about 3.6 acres in size. It's designated village and natural environment. There is a house and uh, two sheds on the property. The lands to be severed, which are outlined kind of in orange yellow here, are about 2,163 square meters. So just again, for a visual purpose, that yellow is to be merged with the lands outlined in blue here. Uh, there was no comments received from neighbors uh, on this application. MBCA has no concerns. ACW staff note that this property is assessed to the Victoria Street Municipal Drain, and so Section 65 of the Drainage Act should be addressed here. In terms of our policies, uh, the ACW official plan does permit lot boundary adjustments for um, servicing purposes in settlement areas such as Port Albert. This severance doesn't impact the ability of that retained parcel to be serviced in the future. And just for context here, this is a bit of a <laughs> scrambled drawing on the screen is what I'm realizing right now. But this is just the preliminary um, servicing drawing that kind of shows why that piece is required for those lands to the south. Um, so it is recommended that C5623 be uh, recommended for approval to the County of Huron. I'll just make a note on a couple of the conditions there. Um, condition seven and eight, because the parcel to which the severed lands are to be merged, this blue parcel uh, was created through severance, we essentially have to break the severance in order to allow for the merger to occur. Um, so that would be addressed through condition seven and eight um, being the cancellation certificate conditions. Um, but all other conditions recommended are just those standard severance conditions. Um, so happy to answer any questions of council on this one. Okay, thank you very much, Selena. Do uh, any members of council have any questions of Selena on this application? Councillor Miltonberg, first, please. Yeah, I don't really have any issues with that, but I, I lack understanding based on that map, which I didn't understand why this yeah. tiny little sliver needs to be is it a gas line or something needs to go in there or, or yeah so in speaking with the applicant it was sort of two piece um the the one was that when the survey was originally done for the severance apparently there was a minor error done by the previous surveyor that has contributed to this the other piece is just that in their work when they're working with their engineer on the preliminary engineering drawings for that south parcel they need a bit more room on those lots effective for a drainage field behind the septic systems in those drawings mm -hmm. um so that is essentially why they're looking for this land at this time. They've tried to rejig it and just can't make it work for the layout that they're going for. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Any further questions or comments of Selena? Okay. So I will entertain a mover and a seconder to recommend this to the County of Huron with conditions as outlined. A move by Deputy Mayor Vanstone, seconded by Councillor Heggie. All in favor of the motion. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Selena, finally, would you care to address us on 4.2, the consent file C57-2023, Alton and Howard, please? Yes, thanks. Um, so this is C57-23. The subject property, we're still in Port Albert, but this is 86 Wellington Street South. Uh, the owners are Suzanne Alton and Steve Howard. Uh, the applicant, again, in this case, is Doug Colbert. So this application has been submitted for the purpose of land assembly. The owners own this existing large property in Port Albert outlined in orange. They're essentially seeking to sever their existing buildings from the rest of the parcel. And this will just allow uh, the vacant lands to be separately conveyed. So this is about eight and a half acres. Uh, you can see kind of on the west portion, there is an existing house, garage and shed. Uh, the property is designated village and it is zoned VR1, which is our village hamlet residential zone. 
So here is the severance proposal. You can see in red basically is those existing buildings and a little bit of lands to the south there. And then the yellow is the proposed retained lands. I will note that this property was previously subject to three uh, consent applications in 2019. And those resulted in the four properties, which you can just see at the top of the screen, uh, being severed from the property. There were a handful of inquiries received from neighbors uh, as a result of circulation, but no formal comments have been submitted. Um, ACW staff have noted a couple comments that I'll just go through more so as it pertains to the master servicing plan. Um, the first being that this property is assessed uh, to the Port Albert municipal drain. And so again, it's recommended section 65 of the drainage act be addressed as a condition. Um, the property is also in the Port Albert master servicing plan study area. Uh, the westerly portion of this property or the property adjacent to Wellington Street uh, is subject to a charge for drainage work being completed for the Wellington Street and Victoria Street drain. Um, this amount would need to be appropriately reallocated if this severance is approved um, and any future purchaser of either parcel should be made aware of those changes by um, the purchaser. Um, in discussion with BM Ross, it is proposed that it, they are going to install a storm lateral for the installation of future sump pump connections that would service any future lots on the retained parcel fronting Wellington Street. Um, they've also noted that the remainder of the property not being allocated to the Wellington Street and Victoria Street drain projects, including any future road drainage, is proposed to outlet to the Port Albert Municipal Drain, and the design of this drainage would not occur until there was a de design concept brought forward for this retained parcel. Um, there's also a branch of the municipal drain that runs through the severed and retained parcels that would need to be accounted for in any future development. And finally, um, both parcels are regulated by the township site alteration bylaw and no alterations to drainage uh, are to be made without the appropriate permits. Um, but overall, staff do not have any concerns with this proposal. This is again, just a severance sketch showing what's proposed. And then this is a concept plan, and this is something that we pretty standardly ask for in a land assembly severance such as this. And this is just to demonstrate that the severance is not going to hinder any future development. This is by no means anything that's proposed for this parcel. It's just a concept plan for our records for demonstration. Um, it is recommended that as a condition of approval, a holding symbol be applied to that retained parcel. And that would basically ensure that, again, an appropriate concept plan is brought forward if development were ever proposed and that a servicing strategy is put in place before any building permits are issued, as well as just to ensure that appropriate level of density is achieved on this retained parcel rather than just a single detached residence. Um, so it is recommended that C5723 be approved. Those are just to the standard conditions. And then again, that recommended holding condition. Uh, so happy to answer any questions. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you very much for that. Do any members of council have any questions or comments to make uh, this uh, on this application? I'll go first to Councillor Miltenberg, please. Uh, two questions. And one is uh, simply clarification. It says this will allow the vacant lands to be separately conveyed. I yeah. don't know what that means. Yeah, so that would just allow them, if the applicants are looking to sell those lands, um, they would be able to. Conveyed means sold or yeah. something. Yeah, separately. that's okay. a good note, though. It could be more accessible language even for me. Yeah. Okay. And the second question is uh, something you said. You said um, that is being assessed part of it to the Wellington Street drain. So if it was to be sold, that the purchaser should be made aware of it or something like that. Yeah. Uh, who makes the purchaser aware? So that there's technically really nothing that the township can do to ensure that a purchaser is made, made aware of this. Um, the reason these comments are put in a report like this is so that if someone asks for previous property files, this is a public report, it will live in the property file and it'll be a note for future staff and or a future purchaser. Um, I defer to the uh, deputy clerk on this, but I think the township does its best to make folks aware in these situations, but it would sort of be up to the owner if they did choose to sell off this property to make any future purchaser aware of that or for the future purchaser to inquire with the township on that. Okay, thank you. If that answers uh, your question. Deputy clerk, do you care to make any comment on this, please? Um, yeah, the township through tax certificates as well as uh, zoning certificates have been making any um, any lawyers that make a request for real estate transactions down there aware of this program. Um, but if there isn't a tax or zoning certificate request made, the township would have no avenue to let a purchaser know. 
So we just put that in there so that it is with the property file and that they're made aware of it. Yeah, yeah please continue with your yeah, microphone. I, Mike. Sorry, because I did hear anecdotally that someone sold in there and that person apparently didn't ask for a tax certificate, so they didn't know they were being assessed to the Wellington Street. Um, so let's say that that happens. By putting it in this report, is the onus then on the owner who's selling it? Like, would there be legal recourse? Maybe that's not a question for you, but you, we're putting it in a report where nobody's actually, you know, has the authority to make sure it's done is how I'm reading it. Is that correct? Sorry, thank you. Um, through the mayor, the long and short of it would be that, yeah, that would be my understanding. And I should note that there's nothing requiring the applicant and the owners in this case to sell off this land. Um, there's definitely instances where folks look to do severances for land assembly, but they hold on to both parcels. Um, but yeah, I'm not aware of any legal recourse or um, any other avenue than what Caitlin has noted in terms of notification for something like this. Okay. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, the holding symbol H is part of the conditions, correct? Correct. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any further questions or comments? Not. I'll entertain a mover and a seconder to recommend this uh, to the County of Huron with the uh, so appropriate conditions. Moved by Councillor Forrester, seconded by Deputy Mayor Van Stone. All in favor of this motion. And that is carried. Thank you very much. We do not have any bylaws this evening. We do have a confirmatory bylaw, though, and I would entertain a mover and a seconder for this. And that would be moved by Councillor Miltenberg, seconded by Councillor Blake. The leave be given to introduce bylaw number 59-2023, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Township of Ashfield, Colburn, Wawanosh Council meeting held on September 12th, 2023, and that it now be read severally a first, second, and third time, and finally passed this 12th day of September, 2023. All in favor of this motion. And that is carried. I thank you. And a motion to adjourn, please. Moved by Councillor Hickey, seconded by Deputy Mayor Van Stone. That Ashfield, Colburn, Wallenosh Township Council does now adjourn to meet again on the 19th day of September 2023 at 9 a.m. or at the call of the mayor. All in favor of this motion. And again, that is uh, carried. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Selena, and to all. Bye, everybody. <laughs>